Um, Kanye West and myself were working on a record. 2017, January. Mm -hmm. And he had made some pro-Trump tweets before then that he had deleted. Mm -hmm. Candace Owens started trolling me on Twitter at some point. Um, when Candace Owens started trolling me on Twitter, her fans, Candace Owens is a self-hating Negro. Conservative Negro. firebrand. Self-hating Self Negro. Self-hating Negro. <laughs> okay. <laughs> <laughs> she started trolling me on Twitter. Right. <laughs> <laughs> okay. <That's what> you <laughs> and mean. her fans immediately started calling me nigger and monkey and all types of shit. Right. Like, this is, how I, this is how I heard about Candace Owens. Mm -hmm. It's like, who is this fucking person, right? And so while me and Kanye are working on this, Kanye is like, I'm hanging out with Kanye. And he's like playing me this incredible music. He plays me this song that he did uh, for Kris Jenner that was beautiful. You know, I'm like, you know, it's, it's like <laughs> the TMZ guy. Like, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> you know, he's like, yo, he's, he's playing me this beautiful, gorgeous music. Right. And he's like, we're doing, we're, we're working on great songs. And he's playing me new Pusha T, and he's playing me new Tiana Taylor. Pusha T hard. You know? Hard. And I'm like, I'm feeling like, yo, this is going to be the year, mm -hmm. 2017. And then this Candace Owens thing ha happens, and I, I, I text Kanye, and I'm like, Kanye's like, I like the way Candace Owens thinks. Mm -hmm. And so I text him, and I send him the screenshots of how Candace Owens is coming at me, and, mm -hmm. and how she's coming at Don Cheadle, and what her fans are saying. And I'm like, yo, this woman is a problem. Like, are you sure? Mm -hmm. And his response to me was, you know I love Donald Trump, right? And that was disappointing to me as mm -hmm. his friend. Sure. Because I felt like, one, I did not know that because you had deleted the uh, Trump tweets. But okay, fine. Mm -hmm. We'll deal with that later. I'm your friend. Here's somebody who, as your friend, is being, you know, this person is putting me in a situation where I can't condone or tolerate the situation. And you're telling me that not only are you okay with it, but you like it, mm -hmm. right? And so I'm having conversation with Kanye and then he tweets out, well, you know, the Democrats started the KKK. Hmm. And I'm like, nah, the Democrats were conservatives back then. So I'm sending him information. And he's like, this is what Kanye said to me. He said, send it to me in a, in a way that I could tweet it out. He said, because all the information you're sending me, I'm reading it, but I want to be able to put it in a way where people could join the conversation. Yeah. So I formatted this tweet. Kanye sends out the tweet. And there's a conversation. So I'm, I'm, at least I'm like, okay, he's open. He's receptive. Right. We're having a conversation. Mm -hmm. um, he then says slavery is a choice. Mm -hmm. Right? So Kanye's like, slavery is a choice. That part, I was like, what the fuck? Mm -hmm. um, I'm with Dave Chappelle at the time in, in L.A. Yeah. All these name droppings. I am. I'm Hollywood. I'm Hollywood. <laughs> Hollywood. Apparently. <laughs> <laughs> and me and Dave were like, okay, we should go holla at Kanye. And I'm like, so I'm confused about what I need to say to him. And I turn on, I open my phone, and Dave Chappelle sent me the video of Van Lathan standing up to Kanye mm -hmm. at the TMZ office. Mm -hmm. This is how I got introduced to Van Lathan. Mm -hmm. um, what you did in that moment for me was so important, brother. Mm. So important. I had never heard of you. I'm not someone who watches TMZ. Right. I, I watched the movie Pop Star, and I saw Eric Andre making fun I of your man with the dreadlocks. Yeah, yeah, and I thought that was dope. Right, right, right. I said, he looked like the nigga from TMZ. I love Shout Eric Andre. Uh, I didn't Ryan know there was more that. than one nigga on TMZ. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Because I don't watch TMZ. What up? You know what I'm saying? And I saw Van Lathan and I said, and the first time that you and me had a conversation, I said this to you. Mm -hmm. I said, what you said? I said, how did you know what Kanye West was going to say? Because the response that you said to him, it felt scripted. Mm -hmm. And I'm yeah. saying that as a compliment. Joe said that. Shout out to Joe Budden. Joe was like, there's no way you came up with there's that no shit There's no way you right came there. up with that shit on the spot, my right. nigga. It felt scripted. What you mm -hmm. said to him was exactly how I felt. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And what I would have said had I had the chance to sit down for a month and write a think piece. Hmm. I said, what this, what this man is saying, this man I've never heard of, I don't know, mm -hmm. is very important for the culture. Mm. What were you thinking in that moment? So a couple things happened. So we, so we do the TMZ show. Mm -hmm. Um, the, 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 the one where Harvey holds the cup, like the main TNZ show, mm -hmm. we're doing it. 
And after the show, they go, yo, you know, Kanye West is coming through. Because I have been <clears throat> disenchanted with Kanye for a while. It was very hard for me. Right. Because and we're all fans of who Kanye is and what not, he does. Not, not just a fan. I right. felt like Kanye West, um, how can I put this? So I listened to a bunch of hip hop, listened to hip hop my entire life, right? All different types of hip hop. You, uh, Native Tongue Family, like uh, I was listening to everything, the, the hardest of the hardcore mm -hmm. shit. Uh, to the, the poppies of the pop shit. The artist that I looked at as most reflecting me was Kanye. Right. Because I feel the same way. Kanye comes along at a time where I'm just getting out of school mm -hmm. and he's talking about all of these fears. And they're not the typical rap fears. Mm -hmm. They're not the typical rap fears of the cops, of uh, you know haters in your hood. or They're life fears that I'm feeling. They're... Like Kanye saying, my mom, your mom saying you don't want to be broke at 31. My mother was saying that, man, what you gonna do? Mm -hmm. Like, like what, like what's gonna be your mm -hmm. thing, son? What are you doing? You're playing Madden against the computer all morning. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> like, like, like what, like what are you gonna do? And he's and he's. He could be a stand-up. He does callbacks. Right, right. And he's talking about I worked at Best Buy at the time. Mm -hmm. He's talking about working at the Gap. Mm -hmm. And I'm like, yo, this cat mm -hmm. is the cat that like. And, and uh, did I he, couldn't get a job at the Gap when I was a kid because I had dreads. Were they, they? They wouldn't. They wouldn't hire. Yeah, and then, like Chris Riggins said, he said he tried to get a job at the Gap, and then the white girl had dreads, and she got the job. She got the job. <laughs> Those so, are not dreads. They, like, well, they, whatever they are, the struggle right. dreads. And so they got. And so Those they are got. Ringlets. They got all. <laughs> the, they got. All, and then on top of that, he's got all of y'all on the album. Right. Mm. So he's got right. you. He was most, representing he, the culture. Yeah, he's got all y'all on the album. Mm. So really, what happened there is. Um, a, a musical love affair was started. Mm -hmm. And then when you fast forward to a couple of years after that, before late registration comes out, Kanye West says, uh, and this is deeply emotional for me, and I'm going to hold it together, but Kanye West says, George Bush doesn't care about black people. Mm -hmm. He said black people, but he could have said, George Bush doesn't care about those people. Mm -hmm. Because everybody in South Louisiana. And you from Louisiana. Felt that. That's right. Everybody from everybody right. that was down there, it was mad. It was mad white people that had Confederate right. flag shit on their car that felt abandoned by their government at that time and learned what socioeconomics were. Mm -hmm. And they were feeling that. And they, they, were, they felt like they had a champion at that point. Mm -hmm. So all of this mm -hmm. time built up. I, I was I wasn't I wasn't a fan of Kanye West. I was almost like a disciple, mm. right? And so and so like it, it, what what ends up happening is for the times of TMZ that he does wild crazy shit, or he's getting into it with people. Eight years I'm defending him. That's right. And whatever happens, whatever right. happens, no matter what he happens, do, whatever no, no, matter. no matter what he ha whatever whatever he's, he does, he's us. He's a, like like I know that Kanye West has a gigantic megaphone and mm. a huge cultural weapon. And he uses it for us. He's always using it for his music. Mm -hmm. And I'm continuously feeding the weapon, continuously feeding the weapon. And one day the weapon's pointed directly at me. Mm -hmm. And so, and, and it was also embarrassing because what people don't understand is they like when we fight. They like when we're disappointed. They like when we have to eat crow. Mm -hmm. So when I'm saying, when, when I'm standing there going, yo, this guy's the biggest, biggest deal and he's with Donald Trump. They're like, uh, we told you. Mm -hmm. And so now I'm dealing with that too. So I'm deeply disappointed. So when I when I hear Kanye is coming to the office, it's not like I want to get something out of off of my chest. I'm sad that this is not a bigger deal for me mm -hmm. because I'm finally gonna get a chance to meet this guy. I'm mm -hmm. like I'm sad. I'm like fuck, man. And he ruined it for you. Right. Yeah. So I'm sitting down and I'm watching the interview. I'm watching the interview that Charlemagne uh, that that my, my man Charlemagne did with Kanye. I'm watching it. And Kanye walks in, says hello to everybody, all of this stuff. Cameras going on, come on. He's in his zone. He's doing a stream of consciousness rant. If you notice, if you watch the clip, Kanye's doing this whole thing. I don't say a word. He says the slavery was a choice thing. I don't. I don't actually don't say anything. He asked if you think that I'm speaking for yeah, you. Yeah, I've watched the clip several times. He asked, yeah. and so when he asked, I'm like, "Fuck this." Mm -hmm. Nah, but my brother. It don't feel like that at all, and it, 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 that's that, that's not how it feels. It does. It, it feels like you're not thinking. It feels like somebody's thinking for you. It feels like you've been co-opted. All of those things. The reason why they felt scripted is because they're coming directly out of my soul. Mm -hmm. 
They're coming strictly from my heart. Mm -hmm. Yo, I got to be honest with you. I love you. My brother, you're a genius. You're hurting me. Mm -hmm. You're putting a target on our backs. Yeah, we're still, I get that. I I get it. I get it, fam. You're in Calabasas. The shit don't don't extend out there. You're learning a whole bunch of new information. Mm -hmm. You're learning a whole bunch of new things. You feel like it, 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 you and Candace, Candace has some new things to teach you. That's fine too. Don't shit on us though. Mm-hmm. We still out here. Mm-hmm. Like we still going through this. Remember us? Like, right. you know what I'm saying? It's, 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 it's me, bro. Right. And so that, that's where it was. And the reason why I felt like that is because it was genuine. And when I started talking, there was one moment where I'm like, I was like, oh shit, this motherfucker's listening to me. Yeah. And then after that, and he and he and he and he apologized to you. Well, he said, "Well, yeah, he doesn't want to hurt you." I'm, listen, I don't think that the, like that night. I, uh, I don't know if you were at his crib that night, mm-hmm. but that night he hit me up that very night, mm-hmm. and he was like, "Yo, come to the crib, let's talk this out." I didn't think that it was appropriate to go then, right? Um, but but uh, but I don't think that there's anything sinister. Absolutely right. Um, but it's interesting because it's like. Um, he he apologized to you, right? He like he was like, I'm, I'm, I didn't mean to hurt you, right? His father came over. Hungry. I didn't mean to hurt you, right? Yeah, and that yeah. was a very important moment mm-hmm. for the culture. Um, what I got out of that moment, and that that person that made me feel like I was your brother, mm. that personalized it for me, mm. because I'm someone who Kanye West on College Dropout, on Last Call, thanks me for bringing him on tour. Yeah, and um. When I took Kanye West on tour. And that's important for, for real hip-hop fans because we knew he made, had made beats, but we didn't know that he had those levels of social consciousness. Mm-hmm. Right. So, when, so he, when he's out there with you and we, when he's, was mo, when he's with most, mm-hmm. those cosigns matter to us. That's right. And the tour that I took him on was Common's tour. Mm-hmm. It was Electric Circus tour. Yeah. Um, I was opening for Common. Right. And I brought Kanye West on the tour. And a large, a large part of my fan base... Um, didn't respect Kanye. Didn't want to hear his voice because he was flossing. He was rolling with me, but he had on a Louis Vuitton backpack and a Rockefeller chain. And at that point, the culture was trying to separate. Rockus is over here. Rockefeller's over here. You got, you got Jay-Z and DMX and the locks over here. You got Most Def and Company Flow over here. People were trying to separate it. Kanye West was very important in bringing those two worlds together. Mm-hmm. You know? and I'm the speak- Gaplight Banana Republican Old Navy. That's right. And speaking to Kanye... Um, you know, after the Trump situation, he said something to me once. He said, uh, "He said, I remember I used to go on, go on your stage, Quali, and the people used to boo me and tell me I was wrong and make me feel bad about myself." And he said, "That's how the whole world feels to me right now, mm. like a Talib Quali show." Mm-hmm. <laughs> you know, that's I digress. That's a sidebar. Mm-hmm. But um, what's important to me? in that moment is that when, when, when I used to tour with Kanye West, he used to do wild shit. Like he would sleep in and not make bus call or like come with show ideas during my set. That I'd Gemini. be like, yeah, like, no, yeah. we're not doing that. It's my show. Like, right. little did I know that he would eclipse me, mm-hmm. you know? But what he used to always do is apologize. Mm. Not enough people know how to apologize properly. Mm-hmm. Right. Know how to be like, you know what? I could have did that better. And mm-hmm. Kanye was always good at that. Right. He was always good at messing up really bad and then be like, you know <laughs> what? I rethought that. And I'm talking about before his deal with Rockefeller, like when he's just on the road with me in common. And be like, I'm my bad. Mm-hmm. And Kanye, I wasn't doing Kanye a favor. Like when he thanks me for last call, thank you for, I didn't do him a favor. I have friends who rap. I didn't put them on my stage. I didn't take them on tour. I didn't give them the opportunities that I gave Kanye West. He earned those opportunities. It wasn't a favor. He made me look good. Mm. I brought him on the road because he upped my game. He made my show better. I was proud to introduce Kanye West. You understand what I'm saying? So it's just interesting to me that in that moment when he apologized to you, or when he was like, I didn't mean to make you feel bad, what I saw watching that 3,000 miles away on the television, I said, "There's there's the real Kanye West. Yeah. That's the real guy. The guy who stopped whatever he was talking about to relate to you on a human level, mm-hmm. that's the real Kanye. Mm-hmm. And if we could get back to that guy, that's going to be interesting. Yeah. I mean, I listen, there was never any animus. Mm-hmm. There was only disappointment. And the mm-hmm. disappointment was that you can't, that he didn't see what was happening. Mm-hmm. But I also understand that, look, bro, like when you're, 
And I believe that there there's room for thought um, all over the spectrum in black America. Mm -hmm. I don't have any problem with the black conservatives. I think that they're wrong. Mm -hmm. Um, I, I, and I think that their ideas are bad. Mm -hmm. But as long as they don't do what you said was being done to you, which is attack prominent black figures to try to to try to um, uh, discredit them, mm -hmm. that's what I have a problem with. Right. The only thing I have a problem with with Candace or with anyone else is not their thought process. They mm -hmm. think the way they think and they mm -hmm. have the views that they have. That's fine. Let's talk it out. But if you're coming at Angela Rod to look if you're coming to all of these people, and 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 you're trying to take a chunk out of their ass, well, that's not the way we should be dealing with each other, period. Right. And so that's the issue I have with that. With, 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 with what Ye was going through, um, it, it to me, it seemed like more than politics. Mm -hmm. It seemed like uh, a guy who was trying to make sense of his world and uh, chose the wrong people to do that, to, mm -hmm. to, to do that with. Yeah, um, I disagree with him about the John, Donald Trump thing, and I always will. Mm -hmm. um, but at the same time, like I don't have to agree with him uh, about politics. I was just like, when you called Kanye out, pretty much you were doing. I didn't for, call him out. Well, I called when him you, in. When you mm. when you called him in, Bars. you checked yeah. him. <laughs> you did for a lot of people what happened, what he did for you when he said, you know, Bush doesn't like black people. So do you now like feel that responsibility, like oh I can't let my culture down, like I don't like do. You, carry that burden at all or nah i i think for me nah. the, yeah. like, no 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 the 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 only burden i feel now that things are a little different for me is to not get into a situation where i am being used as an attack dog mm. against other black people that's right the the only imperative i feel right now is to never be weaponized in a in a pissing contest between other people mm -hmm. what happens is like, black men do war, black women do war, black people do war, and there's some corporation at the top of it that gets to pick up the pieces. Mm -hmm. Seen that game for a long time? Don't want to be a part of it. If there are things for us to discuss, we get on the proper platforms, we tap in with each other, and we discuss them. Mm -hmm. If we getting some jokes off on each other, that's one thing. But like, even with the Hove and the NFL thing, mm -hmm. don't agree with it. Mm -hmm. At the same time, Got to pay that man a proper respect. Don't agree with any of the way that it was done, right? Mm -hmm. Got to pay that man a proper respect and you have to activate the cultural trust and patience that I have in him that he'll get that right. Got to be honest with each other, but at the same time, have to show each other reverence that we need to move things along. So for me, when I saw that and I, and I realized that Ye might have not been completely well, just to be honest with you, psychologically when he was in there, um, and that sort of my moment came because two black men were fighting. Mm -hmm. I don't want to be in a boxing ring with a brother. Mm -hmm. I don't want to be in a boxing ring with a sister. I don't want to be at odds with somebody like that. Mm -hmm. If we have to have intense dialogue and intense conversation, that's one thing. But I don't want to be sold all over the place as the people send me shit all the time. Van, get at this person. Van, get at this person. Ain't none of that. What like, I, I feel like the true strength of the culture is what we, what we do for each other is the way that we're able to use our different skill sets to mend and help heal one another mm -hmm. and be stronger together. I know that seems like a bunch of kumbaya bullshit, but the reality is that black people created a culture on the fly that healed them from some of the deepest wounds that anyone can be inflicted with. And we can use that same culture to now propel us to the next step. Mm -hmm. And that's what I feel like uh, we have the power to do. It's not about Absolutely. calling motherfuckers out.